Rational Radio. Create something. Hey, everybody. We're live again here at Irrational Radio. The three board gods are interviewing Icky V29, also known as 26. Icky. 26? 29. 26. Oh, it's 29? 29? Yeah. Oh, my God. I See? fucked it up. It's exactly what it says on the <laughs> Zoom box. I wasn't, it I says, didn't actually, it's... wasn't any more prepared than you. It says 26 um, on the Twitch. I'm so sorry. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. But it, this, is, this is, this is um, three versions later. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> They've made three new versions, and this is that one. Uh, so, um, t- tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, like what you what you do and uh, how long you've been doing it for. All right. Um, my name is Icky. Um, most people call me Icky or Vicky. One of either one. Um, I am, uh, first and foremost, I'm a mom. So, I get lots of ideas from my son. Um, I have been DMing for about three years. I've also been playing for about three years. Somewhere in that range. Um, I run a campaign on Twitch, um, and I'm working on running a home table campaign, um, a couple of them actually, and uh, I play in a couple of games on Twitch as well, so I'm kind of nice. all over the place. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so as, as a, a DM who primarily runs things on the internet, um, take us through a little bit about your, your uh, world building process. Uh, you, we talked before the show and you mentioned that you've been working on a world for, uh, in fact, you started on the world before you actually started DMing. Um, yes. And that's kind of kind of near and dear to my heart because I'm a really big world builder as well. And I spend much more time doing world building stuff than I spend doing any other aspect of the role playing uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, much to most, m- many people's chagrin sometimes. And uh, so, yeah, how do, you, how do you go about building a world? What, what inspired you and what were the first steps you took to create your place? Um, ironically enough, uh, my, my son and my grandmother love Cracker Barrel. This this, this is going somewhere, I swear. Uh, (laughs) and, uh, they have these weird TY plushies. Uh, and there was this really cool chromatic dragon plushie that was there. And I was like, man, that's cool. And, um, this is before I I got into D&D really much at all. And, um, that image, this weird googly-eyed dragon never left my brain. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start writing about it because I love to write. And um, it's stuck there. I'm just going to start writing. And I built this world called Eberoth. Um, it's uh, the land known as the Land of Dragons. Okay. And um, in most D&D campaigns, dragons are not seen as very good. They're normally considered bad. And I kind of wanted to change that kind of like flip it on its head a little bit so in in my particular world all dragons are shifters of a sort they have a humanoid like form and then they have a dragon form and uh it talks about you know a war that awoke the dragons and they breached the surface and that was like the big cataclysm of my world um and from there it's been it's been a ride um I have some very creative players who know how to push my buttons. And um, the nice thing about my particular world, since it's all very open-ended, uh, is they help me create little pieces of it. So, But nice. yeah, that's, that's, that's how I started. I saw an image, and it kind of stuck in my brain. I was like, nah, I'm just going to write about it. <laughs> you know, I think I had that beanie baby. I'm pretty sure I had it. The little, like, it was like purple like, and kind of had, like, some metallic colors. Yeah, it had, like, pinks colors. and blues. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, um, I had that. I was just gonna say, I, <laughs> I did too. <laughs> I definitely saw it. That's for sure. I don't think I yeah, ever owned yeah, one, but I, I definitely know of the, the dragon itself. The beanie baby thing. My mom. Yeah, was, was, yes. <laughs> that's I actually, that's, that's I have cool. it downstairs in the basement. So. Yeah. Nice. Wait, we used to. Uh, I don't know. What we used. To, um, I, I'm, I'm really a, a huge proponent of the whole like players help you build your world situation. Um, that's, that's huge that's awesome because it's, it's a really neat way to get your players involved in more than just we're gonna go fight the dragon now, you know? Right. Yeah. But we actually have cool. um on sorry on my games uh, on Sundays uh, if I'm feeling up to it after our six and a half hour sessions on Twitch Jeez. uh on Friday nights and Saturday nights if I'm feeling up to it and I wake up at a decent hour on Sundays we have Sunday fun day and I will actually invite my whole discord to join me in Twitch 
and we'll just create different aspects of the world. Like one day we were just building a city that's going to be snow covered and half underground. So help me build what you think would be here. Um, let's that's talk really about cool. the old lore. Let's, you know, like, yeah, we're, oh, we're talking about the gnome city. Let's, let's build a gnome city together. Come help me. You know, so we nice. will sit around and do that. And it'll also be an RP session for some of the guys that can't play on stream. So we do stream games, but I also have play by post for people that are anxious about getting in front of a camera or um, just don't feel comfortable getting on a microphone. That's fine. Let's let's do some play by post and we kind of mesh the two together so we can go over what happened in last night's session or, you know, we can talk about the bounty that's running right now that all the people are playing in and people can go shopping for things and you know, little stuff. But it's our it's our fun day for our group. So nice. That's really interesting. That's uh, a very creative way of, of uh, adding a lot of uh, player and community uh, additions to your world. Uh, that's that's very interesting. I I don't uh, I I take the role players that I'm going to be using in my world and have them build like where they're from or their families and that kind of thing. That's how I have yeah. them add their own voice. But the uh, the community building that's really interesting. Where did you like come up with that idea? What was the what was the driving um, force behind it? I actually was in another, the first group that I played in as a player uh, had something similar. Um, sometimes it wouldn't be for what we were running. Maybe it was for the DM was running another game. So they're like, hey, let's build a monster together. Let's throw a monstrosity together. And I really liked that, that it got a, a community engagement. And right now my Discord server has over 50 people in it. Um, and not all of them are our peers. Some are just there to show some support, and, you know, right. they'll watch us when Twitch is on, which is fine. Um, but for the people that RP that just don't like talking, it's it's really nice for them to be like, oh, well, what if you did it this way? Or, hey, here's a cool trap that I saw on Reddit. Why don't you try this? And it, it's just nice to let everybody feel involved. And I think that's a, a really cool thing is just, you know, don't exclude somebody because they don't want to be on camera. You know, just yeah. bring them in. That's, that's yeah, always absolutely. been kind of like, and, and you know, especially with like what we do, you know, where, where we're sitting on cameras in front of people or, or maybe you're you're recording and, and creating a podcast or, or whatever um, is there's people who are just, you know, and especially, you know, in the community of Dungeons and Dragons, there are going to be people who are not super interested in like putting their face out there and, and, and yeah. you know, and, and aren't really into that kind of thing. And so it's cool to be able to, you know, still have them contribute, be a part of your world and, and still be able to kind of sit back and, and not have to worry about the presentation aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, my 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 group likes it too. They like that they are able to to assist me in any way that they can. So even if we don't have a Sunday fun day, I have a homebrew tab just on my Discord, so people can just pop stuff and ideas in there. Or um, I have a phone to DM question. They're like, "Hey, can we do this in your world? Is this here?" And if it's not, it's it's a good way for me to sit down with that person or with a couple of people and just flesh that out so that people know. That's so, really interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's a cool strategy. Yeah, we have more general stuff along those lines. With uh, it's uh, kind of like you know, hey, I've got a question about my world. Can anybody pitch in and give me an answer, kind of thing? But uh, but that's a cool idea with the single established uh, setting that everybody's all pitching in to help yeah. develop together, and then that's that that's fun. You get a bigger yeah. uh, cohesive um, concept that way. That's so cool. uh, I. I, I guess to kind of continue along this, um, how do you protect your audience from spoilers or a, in your world? Because that would be my biggest concern doing something like this for, it's like I have a, a large scale world project called Paralandia. That's where our, uh, our uh, podcast is set in. And there's a lot of facts about the world that are important for like what I want to be established. But I don't want the audience to know about it before the podcast right. is released. So how do you balance right. that? How do you allow people to create stuff without letting it ruin what you want to surprise people with? What we normally do is we deal in generalities. <laughs> so um, if it's a city that's important, but there's certain facets of a city that are important, I will hit every other, but not necessarily that facet. Like if it's the okay. ruling, if it's the rulers that we need to have a secret about, we're just going to talk about the general people that are there. What kind of races would be in this location? It's in this environment. It's going to be cold. What races like cold? What would their homes be like? We'll stick to generalities. We'll stick to generalities. Like, like... Good? Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I heard you. <laughs> no, it's so sort of like, like, like uh, you know, uh, crowd, crowdsourcing the immersion factor of your, of your world, of your city. Yeah. 
um, all the other stuff that's happening around. Right. If we're homebrewing items, like sometimes I'll be like, hey, I'm, you know, we're looking for, I don't have a ton of stuff for monks. What can we do for monks? Let's, let's try to homebrew some stuff for monks. I don't throw it in the world right away because more than likely after a few weeks, my monks are going to forget all about it. So that's when I'll throw something in. Mm. Um, things like that. Uh, if it's if it's something that is integral that I don't want my players to know about, I have a journal that I write all of those little things in. Um, I have two assistant DMs that'll run bounties for me on my on my server when I when I'm not available, and they know a little bit more than everybody else because they are technically players. So I don't let them know the important bits that pertain to their characters, but if they're taking a person through a bounty, I'll be like, hey, you should totally touch on this topic with this player and see what happens. Build this out a little bit for me. But for the most part, it's 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 up here. It's in my journal. Right. So uh, mm-hmm. I stick to, I guess, smoke and mirrors almost, you know, just general, okay, yeah, general yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do, do you find yourself, um, I guess, kind of juggling the uh, decisions that are made by those the co-DMs, I guess? Is, do, they, do, they, do, do you find yourself in a position where stuff that they've defined conflicts with what you've defined? Or is that like not a, not a common not, issue for you? It's not a common issue right now. Um, they're just kind of testing the waters as to what they can do um, because it's, it's something new we've recently implemented just because we have now almost 60 people in our Discord server that more like 40 or so of them want to participate in things, but they're not good with cameras. So right. how can we get them you know, playing at the same time? So um, they have, what I've done is all of my moderators have three NPCs that they can use and I've already defined those NPCs. I already have their basic characteristics and all this and that. And usually it's, usually it's, oh, um, what town is this person from? Because you don't have it on their character sheet. Oh, they're from this town. I'm sorry. Let me put it in there for you. Um, that's the one nice thing about D&D Beyond is I have unlimited character slots. And I have about 144 of them filled. So that if I need an NPC, I can just toss one at my, yeah. at my assistants. Um, usually when it's something important or that my assistants feel is important, they'll come to me first. They'll be like, hey, would it be okay if I did this? Or how do you want me to go through this part? This is what kind of how I want this to end. Is this okay? Absolutely. Um, They've done a pretty good job. Uh, One of my my mods is a little bit more known to accidentally kill my party than the other one, Uh, but that's okay. (laughs) That's what what Divine Intervention's for. they had a, a brush with Lady Luck, the group that accidentally got exploded. So uh, <laughs> that was interesting. They they decided to punch a time bomb. That that wasn't my fault. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> but, you don't uh, want that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, most of like I said, most of them they they come to me if there's a big issue. But for the most part, I I'm like, okay, this is where you're taking this. Here's what I have general map wise. Here's a skeleton of it. Flesh it out a little bit for me, and we'll see how that goes. That's cool. If I need to retcon something, I can retcon something. That's not right. Real. So, uh, kind of going on to um, your your own DMing style. How much work do you put into preparing sessions that you're going to stream? And you know, for you said you were going to do a home game. Do you have any plans to prepare differently for the live game than you would for the stream game? And if so, what are those differences? So, for my stream game, I have simplified a few things for myself. Um, I have a Google Sheet that has about 30 different tabs at the bottom. I call it my IKEA because it's all of my roll tables. So if I need something real quick, I can roll right on that table. Um, For the most part, I have some maps that I've hand-drawn, that I've printed. I have some maps from Pinterest. Like if they decide to go off the beaten track and it's not something I have necessarily prepared, I can just toss it over. Um, uh, but I have I have a couple of bookmarks where they're like, hey, can we find this? And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Hold on. Yeah. It's easy. I feel like it's easier to be more subtle in the, oh, my God, I forgot about this part. Or, mm-hmm. or you know, mm, I need to make something up. When you're on the Internet, um, there's a lot more tools at your disposal. Uh, when I'm preparing for my home game, I have created myself a little... Um, a GM binder that I have um, a couple of my tables, just the ones that I use the most. But for the most part, uh, live is just going to be thinking on my feet um, a lot. Yeah. 
because uh, I have learned that no matter how much planning and effort you've put into a session, your players are going to go that away. Yep. That's so. <laughs> one of the main things that we try to push here to for first time DMs to understand is that, yeah, you, it, no matter how much you plan, unless you strictly railroad your party, they're going to make decisions that you're like, okay, well, this is not how I saw this session going, but whatever. Yeah. yeah like, uh, are. like I had an Aladrin touch a bed mimic the other day. That was not supposed to happen. And now our barbarian has a baby mimic as a pet. And <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do with this, but we'll figure it out. So <laughs> yeah, the, my players are good at keeping me on my toes and I have to have like backups upon my backups Yeah, just to have, Oh, we're, we're supposed to go to this city. Well, let's detour through these woods. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so no, I got you. Hang on a sec. Yeah. Yeah. yeah two <laughs> seconds. RP the... amongst yourselves for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the DM is loading. <laughs> Please stand by. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I guess like kind of, kind of going along with that for in terms of story wise, because we did talk about how like you can't plan. So it's, do you have any kind of like overarching story that you uh, like pl are planning or like, how do you structure oh, yeah. that? So I, I'm a fan of Easter eggs. Okay. Um, so what I'll do is I'll plant some seeds in, in each episode that I can. Um, if they've really gone off the beaten path and there's no way I can tie something in, that'll just be a, a, a day where there's no tie in. Right. Uh, but um, a couple of my players have chosen characters that will tie in with the main story here and there. So if they're in that session, I can drop something. No problem. Right. Um, overarching is they don't, they've not met the BBEG. They just think that they have. Um, they've met a bad guy, right. but they have no idea who it is. They have no idea who that person works for, and they have no idea what they're doing. So, uh, so um, early times then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, they, they've done some really cool things, which I'm super proud of them for doing, but in the end, they don't ask a lot of questions. So it's a lot easier for me to weave the story in and out of the nonsense that they do because they don't ask a ton of questions. Man, that's, wow. I can't imagine a party that doesn't ask a ton of questions. I right? <laughs> I can't imagine that. My, oh. my parties are all, uh, all, all I, let's discuss all this for 45 minutes. <laughs> All so we do the, is ask questions. Oh, they just all of NPCs. <laughs> all right, of me. guys, you're not gonna just come uh, at me. Yeah, <laughs> it's assault. No, that's that's, that's interesting. Dragons of, of questions. <laughs> Dragons of questions, Landia. Question, Landia. Um, but no, no, no. That's that's interesting. That kind of highlights, I suppose, the differences between tables. You know how how some role players can just be all about the, um, you know, kind of like the ride, like to see where their oh, yeah. decisions lead rather than like trying to take charge and uh, forcing something to happen in the world. Because I, 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 yeah, I agree. I, I love when I'm able to make my players forget they're playing a game. Yeah. I, I had a moment with a character who um, his father turns out to not be his father. And that moment was dropped on him and he literally flew backwards in his chair and, and he like freaked out. And he's like, for a minute there, I forgot that I wasn't my character. What did you just do? Yep, <laughs> I was right. like, that's perfect. That's what I wanted. That's the magic of the of the uh, the storytelling uh, medium. You know that that isn't necessarily an aspect of a lot of other storytelling mediums. So, like to get on my my literature high horse soapbox, uh, I really do think that there are stories that are waiting to be told in a role playing kind of situation or a role-playing medium that can't be told in other stories or at least the emotional impact can't be brought brought to bear in the same way you can watch a movie and not feel it but you could play that movie in an rpg and you could feel it right i i wholeheartedly agree yeah and i mean even the the medium that's closest video games is still has that uh like railed aspect to it where the designers can't like lay down track that you like caused you know it's all pre-rendered pre-written all that kind of thing there's nothing that you can discover that's actually like yours necessarily um whereas in you know dragons or <laughs> dungeons and dragons um it's it's you know uh, you you can go off the beaten path and discover stuff that the dm only put there because you're opening that door 
You know, it's just you. No one else is going to have this experience with this game. And, you know, just like with books or movies or stuff, you sit down and you watch the same movie or you read the same book. You sit down to play a D and D game. You're going to have a completely different game in, than any other person. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's just yeah, it's one of my favorite parts about the the storytelling medium is yeah. that uh, yeah, it's it's just a, a great way to get people involved in storytelling in a way that's not not possible in other other places. Um, so I, I you know going back to the <clears throat> interview format. Um, right. <laughs> There's one of those. We right, yeah, no, I, have, I totally have, like, this nice set. No, it's it's it two pages. It says creative players and community building. Um, But, uh, so, <laughs> uh, but no, I kind of going going along the same lines is, how, what do you think are the most important t- or things that a DM has to do to get that reaction out of players? Like, what do you think are the most important aspects of a DM's job that really facilitate players getting forgotten uh, or forgetting that they are sitting at a table rolling dice. I like to take a little bit of one-on-one with my players. Um, so when they are deciding what they want to play in my world, I have like a 15 random questions that just helps them get into the mindset of their player. You know, who are your parents? What are your goals? Uh, you know, uh, what's its favorite food? What's its favorite color? Um, just stupid inane like first date questions just so that they can get into the headset headspace of their character okay and they're going to jump in and out of that a hundred times but they'll send me their answers and what i do is is i i actually read them i actually i have a saved file on my computer that has all of those like random questions so i'll pull something and i'll just tease them a little bit with something like hey that's that really pretty blue flower that your character likes maybe you should go over and see that and then hey maybe there's a a fake creature there that charms you that takes us on an arc um but it's it's remembering the little thing you're playing with a group these characters are going to drop little nuggets that you just if you tuck them away and hold on to them for later they're going to pull that player back in so there, there will be a moment where a, a player's might not be in the headspace to play today, but they're like, yeah, let's do it anyway. And they're kind of mopey. And, and you'll be like, hey, so remember how you said you blacked out last session? Well, you would now have bite marks on your neck and you're not sure how they got there. Let's right. let's try to work backwards and figure out what happened. We actually, uh, first session, our bard was uh, woke up with fang marks in his neck and he has no idea what happened. So he was working backwards to try and figure out what happened. Uh, he has no memory of the night at all. Uh, right. That's fun. That's um, great. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just the little things that you're like, oh, let's, let's pull you in a little bit. But for mm. the character that had the most impact, uh, his character's name is El Rohin. Um, he is a Aladrin noble born son. And he just found out that his father isn't who he thinks he is. Ooh. And it, So it took his whole character and basically broke it in half because he was raised to be a nobleman, but he's technically not. And so now he has this big conflict and he's working through it now. But at the time, it was just huge because that was his whole story. Um, And he had built himself up to be this big, bad noble that, you know, he had all these ideas and he was only here because his father made him come here. And now he has to start from the bottom and build himself back up. Um, just, I don't. It sounds so bad, but breaking your characters a little bit helps. Oh, oh, I, I yeah, do that tell a me lot. about breaking characters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I am a DM that that. See, I, I definitely, you know, uh, don't, don't. I'm not abusive. You know, I don't. You are. You're, you're, you're from a, Brett. Okay, <laughs> not only that, but my my warlock patron like multiple was literally going to kill the entire party. Oh, Warlocks. I love Warlocks. So I actually will RP out how they got their pact. I don't care if it was 30 years ago. I don't care if it was 30 minutes ago. We're going to RP this out so we know Ooh. who we're dealing with. Right. So cool we, will, we will have a whole RP session with my Warlocks, just me and my Warlock, and we're going to RP it out. Um, sometimes they're like, oh, I want, uh, I want a Fae. Oh, I want a Fiend. Oh, I want a this. And then I will, I will pick one. And it might not be one that they like, but I will pick one, and we will RP this out. And that... Kyron, Kyron gave me a used car salesman. Yep. They, uh... <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> it was great. wonderful. It was hey, so great. 
I, I gave <laughs> um I gave our Aladrin uh that same Aladrin Elrahim. He uh, met with Eldath, and she she has changed him from a fighter to a paladin. He's a paladin now. Oh my! Um, so it it has it has gotten better, but uh, as he's rebuilding himself now, so now he's rebuilt himself in a different image. He wants to be something different. So like it was part of character development, <laughs> but uh, no, it was really interesting interaction because his character had a girlfriend, and he had to explain why he was in the <laughs> baths with another person, even though it was a goddess. It was great. <laughs> whole big awesome. thing but uh nice. yeah no it it breaks it's not what it looks like <laughs> breaking them, but being subtle about it because you have to you have to get in there first and just like make the little space and then all of a sudden you throw something that just splits it and it yeah it helps like i like feel like it's really bad i really bad advice but it's really bad advice. no 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 i mean like <laughs> Yeah, torturing player uh, uh, yeah. P- player characters is excellent advice, honestly. And but you really got to know about it. Yeah, yeah, you got to know your party. Make sure you're yep. not like yeah. you know going down the wrong beat <laughs> with the wrong person, kind of thing. Right, but, absolutely. But but, but d- doing that, I think absolutely, that's how you get emotional investment is by being able to kind of yeah leverage their personal sentiments one way or the other about stuff and conflicts and whatever. And yeah, like you're saying, you've been saying that's how you can like engender immersion or whatever you know get people to forget that they're they're at a table playing a game i i let most things be like morally ambiguous so that when i throw them a choice it really throws them for a loop i don't i don't throw one every session i don't throw one every month but i will throw a hard choice at them and that helps too yeah right especially if it's then it's not just we're the good party let's do the good thing it's right you know this this thing is going to have consequences. This thing is going to have consequences. Oh, Which absolutely. Essentially, right. right. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's. I I think that yeah the the fact of using characters to break or get into characters' heads is a is a really good point. And you also brought up something really important: is that the story you tell has to be created by the characters' interactions with the world and who they are. If you're like telling a story and nothing or the, who the characters are and like what they're doing doesn't have any influence on the story, then you're not telling a good role playing story. You're uh, you're just basically like having a play, you know, because uh, people who are acting in, ca- in character in a play also have no agency. No matter what they do, the play is going to turn out the same way. Well, I mean. Not you can put a spin but, on a scene or whatever here right. and there, but yeah, right. the play goes to the same conclusion kind right. of thing either way. And you want to avoid, you know, putting on a play rather than running a role Most playing Most parties, game. yeah, come to play a tabletop RPG to avoid that kind of, or you know what I mean? That's, yeah, that, that yeah. Kind of, like I'm just I'll be sit here to told to be told a story. There's nothing wrong with uh, you know enjoying yeah. that kind of a game or whatever too. But definitely, I prefer to. When I'm playing to have a, a sane and as a DM, it's easier mm-hmm. when your players you do more of the work for you. You don't want <laughs> your players to come to a table and be playing on their phone the whole time. You want them right. invested. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to have to like, hey, guys, come on, like pay attention. Yeah. You know, it's like they want to say it. you want them bugging you because you're still trying to figure out, oh, shit, hang on. I got to like stat out an encounter because I didn't expect you were going to start a fight at the pawn shop or whatever. Oh, yeah. I have like, a. That Aladrin likes to commune with his goddess every time he's in a session. So if I need to find quick notes, like if I'm trying to like make up something on the spot, that's the perfect time because I'm RPing as a goddess to this person, and it's going to take us 20 minutes to get past this, so I can look up something if I need to look up something. Like, you know your moments, but no. I, uh, and all my other players let know, like, oh, this is the perfect time to go to the bathroom. Let's right. Let's do this yeah. now. Like, I've got go get a drink. I've got a sec. I've got I've got at least ten minutes, but <laughs> but it's all good because my players enjoy both RP sessions that are strictly more RP. Like oh, we're traveling to a new city; it's going to take us a couple of days. This is going to be an RP session. Um, it, they love when I throw combat at them because I don't throw normal things at them, but they really enjoy the fact that I don't do combat every time. I don't do RP every time. It's kind of a mix up between both, and I let them decide. They set the pace yeah. of that. Yeah, it's ten. I, so, I, so give I, me an I, example then of of maybe what you would do. Say you have to go from city A to city B, and it's a couple mm-hmm. day travel. You know what? What would you do there? Would you do like, um, you know how how do you how do you pre- prepare that and and do it? Like, 
What's your so, process? Um, if it's a city they've never traveled to before, they're more than likely going to have like a horse and buggy situation. Um, so, you know, there's a covered wagon of some kind because ours is set in a, in a feudal kind of era. So there's no modern technology. Um, so, you know, they're more than likely going to have a covered wagon, a couple of horses or like really thick furred cows, depending on which part of the con continent they're in. Um, we will, uh, I'll have, you know, people roll for perception checks that are driving the cart or are on the back. The people inside can have their little RP moments. Um, even if I'm RPing with someone on the outside, they know that in the Discord call, they can RP between themselves in the carriage. And then if there's something that I need to pick up on, I can just I can just grab that and, and talk to them about it That's as we go. Um, okay. So, so they do that via text or something, or do they yes. do it all? Okay. So, so if I'm so say I'm I'm doing the guy that's communing with his goddess like we're talking doing that whole situation and I'll RP that live out out loud on on Twitch uh, the players in the cart might be RPing amongst themselves in the the Discord call because that's what we we use in particular um, so they'll be RPing out there you know little things like oh when we get to the city I want to see if they have a clothing store I want to see if I can get you know my sword sharpened. You, they'll RP that out amongst themselves so that they're not feeling left out. Right. And I have that little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with the person that needs it. And then I'll switch over. Okay. So while you guys were in the cart, you guys were talking about the different stores you wanted to go to, you know, I'll, I'll pull on that and then I'll, you know, okay, so we have about two hours journey. What did you, what was your perception roles? What did you see? I'll kind of describe the landscape that they're traveling through um, if they're going through hostile territory, you know, they're probably going to see some something bad that, that might attack them. Um, if they're going through relatively neutral territory, it's usually an easier trip. Once we get to the first end of the first night, they'll set up camp. Uh, one person will go hunt, one person will set up a fire, and we'll kind of just RP basic stuff. Uh, we'll do some RP, you know, for watches if that's what they want. Um, I'll be like, okay, so how do you guys want to do watch tonight? Do you want to do watch tonight? What are we doing? Um, I, I try to let them lead the the speed of certain things because I feel like if they really want to just get to the next place, they'll let me know. Yeah. Can we just can we just skip to there? Like right. we've, no we've been here we've whatever. been here for two and a half hours. We're in neutral territory. Can we can we just go? Yeah, yeah We're absolutely. All good unless we yeah, unless there's something stopping us to move forward right. or whatever. Yeah, right. I think that's yeah. So it, it, it depends on them. If they had a, a weird session last week where there was a lot of unanswered questions that just needed RP'd out between the group, you know, if someone learned a secret, let's 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 sit down one night and talk about that instead. Mm -hmm. They might want to have that that camp scene. Right. Um, right. And then, you know, getting to a new place, we I describe the the new place that they come to, you know, the the weather, the the town itself, if it's a town, if it's a village, what depending on what it is, if it's a ruin. Um, I try to have a visual of some type, um, even if it's just off of Pinterest, you know, Hey, this is roughly kind of what you're looking at, or maybe this is the building style, but it's not this color or, you know, just so they can feel it and they can see it, they can visualize it a little bit better. I can, I can write beautiful words about a location and I can describe it great, but some people just, they need that visual. So I'll have some yeah. for them. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll go through the motions. And, and sometimes it is a slower session. It's just RP. They, they are trying to gather information about this guy. So they're going to wait around for a couple of hours and just watch. Mm -hmm. that, can, that can be boring. So, you know, we'll try to spice it up with, okay, so, hey, did you hear that rumor? Or, hey, did you see that bulletin? There's a lot of bounties out here. Maybe we can do something there. Usually um, my know. players just fill it up with making fun of each other. Yes, well, I know. <laughs> it, depends, it depends on who's playing that night. Um, we have some very big personalities in our group, uh, depending. We have a barbarian who um, is very much a barbarian, but mm -hmm. he, he, uh, he likes to do stupid things. Um, <laughs> like uh, using a door as a, sly, as a sled to get down some stairs, or throwing a dwarf through a wooden door or lighting a giant spider web on fire and dropping a giant spider on his entire group and knocking them all unconscious. So nice. I mean um, <laughs> all of these though, right? happen. Like... <laughs> uh, he actually threw a child at the one rogue and knocked the rogue unconscious. Nice. So what happened to the like, child? 
Uh, Chad was also knocked unconscious. Uh, I hope, but... yeah. <laughs> Two for, yeah I like, one time I threw you, Eric, didn't I? Yep, yeah. Yep. That's, yeah. Yep. So, I mean, we, we do have some personality. Uh, we do have a character who's a little bit more like a dad kind of figure, and he'll try to like rope them all in. And, and uh, we have a, a couple of uh, figures that are more, you know, they're they're the power ones. Like they're they're just there to punch things, and and that's it. Um, so we have we have a, a good mixed bag of people. So it depends on who's going out that night. Um, if we have something that. Uh, someone that is going to take the lead as kind of the face of the group for that evening, that's going to determine how the session's going to go. So if our barbarian is the face for the evening, I know I have a lot of improvisation to do. Um, <laughs> I, I love him. He He's actually played by my fiance, so I, I love him, but some days, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, no. We, it it really depends on the group. Um Definitely. Some days it's it, okay. It's it's taken you guys three days to get there. You've had a relatively easy journey. You're kind of out of food and water at this point, but you can always restock at the next city. Um, or it's the uh, the slow and steady. We're gonna hit every single little village on our way to this big city, and it doesn't matter how long it takes for us to get there. We're gonna it's stop. Gonna take, it's gonna take eight I'm, sessions for us to move your story beat. I'm gonna <laughs> see, yeah. I'm gonna see if they have any cool spices. I'm the chef. Okay, let's see if they have any cool spices. They have any interesting <laughs> instruments. All right, Bard, give me ten minutes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't bring up food. Just <laughs> yeah. yeah, we yeah. There's a oh whole my thing. goodness, we, it's uh, a whole we, deal. Start a food we, cart. <laughs> we got some dragon eggs oh, um, from from a little a little bandit hideout, and we had to travel with them. And dragons aren't like there aren't dragons in this world anymore. Um, and so we had somebody build a giant food cart for us to travel with them in, and then we could keep them heated in there, right? So we've kind of taken it to heart, and now it's kind of like this background meme in our group that that our real goal is to be traveling food cart salesmen. It's not a meme, traveling damn food. it. That's Grot's <laughs> dream. It, it, <laughs> right, it's okay. it's, it's Sorry, your... Yeah. your uh... Mission statement. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, That's a good way to put that. We're franchising it out now, <laughs> too. Like, it's, it's moving now forward. Now we've got goblins that are going to run them. We're going to get more carts. And it's, it's, it's a whole big deal. It's a little bit more difficult with my group now that we opened it up from the original five players that were playing in season one. Um, we've opened it up to a community game. So it's a it's a wild card. I have no yeah. idea who's going to play that night. So on sure. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I open up roll call. Tuesday, I open up roll call for Friday. Wednesdays, I open up roll call for Saturday, and it, whoever signs up first is who's going. Gotcha. I That's can do up to eight it, yeah. people. Oh, um, wow. so, Ooh, big games. <laughs> so, so uh, I think I went a little over my head when I decided to open up to eight people, but you know, we have fun. So that's all that matters. That's um, the important thing. So I could have the same people playing both sessions just because that's what they want to do. So they've mm -hmm. all created two characters. So if they take uh, one okay. character on session on Friday, They'll take somebody else on Saturday. Um, okay. Some people have been a little bit more and we're like, hey, can I have a third character? I'm like, look, that, as long as you have the mental capacity for three characters, go for it. You shoot your shot. But like, I, it's not going to be a problem if you can only handle two or you can only handle one. It, that's whatever is your prerogative. Okay. But um, yeah, so because it's a community game now and it's open to everybody, our traveling sessions have gotten shorter. Right. We'll There's get there. Cross talk kind of stuff. It's more just like, okay, guys, let's go. Yeah, you'll we'll find a lot with different groups. Is, is some people are much more open to just just role playing, right? <laughs> like, let's spend a whole session walking a day building a door about how, uh, yeah, building a, a goddamn door. <laughs> um, and uh, and and other people are more like, you know, let's let's just let's move on to the actual like content, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unless the content I, is just the door thing. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 the magic, Kyron. Right. Sometimes that's, the door is the. That's that's a thing. We uh we have our group has inside jokes for each character. Uh, we have a druid who is known as our trap finder because he has found every single trap in every <laughs> single place that he's been in, and he usually finds it with his face. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, like actually, there was one point where our Goliath barbarian stepped over a trap because his walking speed is just—he's got long legs. And our druid came through next, and he got tripped up, and he got so hurt by the same by this trap that the Goliath <laughs> just walked over. And 
so now he's known as the Trap Finder. Uh, we have Daddy Issues 101, which is El Rohin. Um, we've got, everybody's got their own little nickname uh, no, in our group. It's great. And it's, it, we pick on each other a little bit, but um, it's, that's more like a character picking on another character. It's not yeah. like, right. oh, yeah. I don't go there it's and be like, like, all right, look. I mean, that's it, like, that's where camaraderie's at, right? Like okay. when, when you, when you can play in character and give another player in character shit about their character then yeah. then you know you've you've established you know some relationships between the characters oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so i got i got two questions here and you can okay. answer either one okay. um the first one is uh what is your experience with problem players have you had anyone that has been incredibly or, or overly disruptive in games or in sessions that you've had to um either discipline or remove or how do you uh, make sure that eight people or six to eight people uh, get like equal time role playing or someone doesn't get left out because if I'm playing with more than six honestly I have a problem with almost forgetting that someone is there because they just don't have the personality that three of the f six people have um, right. so yeah yeah it, either question um, I, uh, I, I kind of answer both I have not okay. currently had a problem with any problem players um, nice. Which which has been great. Uh, there, I think it's I think it's just the way I DM maybe is I am I'm a little bit more fluid with how I play my game and I can sense that oh if this is going to be a problem I'm just going to shift around it like we're gonna we're gonna take it from here we're gonna go a little bit different so that everybody's happy. Um, I think that's just I've always been that way. I've always been like ah oh, no let's 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 keep everything neutral. I'm I don't like fights. Let's let's neutralize this. So I think I. I just honestly think that way, so I try to neutralize it before it happens. Um, I have played in some groups with some problem people, um, and I have seen the kind of devastation that, that that can bring. So I think my brain automatically is like, nope, we're gonna whoop, we're gonna sidestep this. Um, but as far as as keeping everybody in session and making sure everyone gets equal time um, before session starts we're usually in a phone call for about 30 minutes and we're all BSing, getting a lot of the, the talk yeah. out so that we can, we can handle session. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. Uh, but um, I always kind of try to have a little bit of a game plan. Like, Oh, you're taking this person. I'm going to make sure to make, like, I'll, I'll note it um, on, you know, one of my, you know, thousand and four notes that I take for that session, you know, like, Oh, this character's coming. We're going to make sure we talk about this. This character's coming. We're going to make sure we talk about this. Um, if it's a character, like a group that we have a couple of people that have partnered off with another player, uh, or character, I should say. So, you know, if there is, is a group, maybe we'll do something that deals with that group. And we do have people that don't talk as much. Um, so I try to, if I can't get it in session after session, if there's like little things we need to, you know, tie up loose ends or something like that, I'll take the time then, because sometimes it is just a fact of. I don't really want to talk on camera. I'm I'm there to be there, but I'm not comfortable. Okay, then we'll we'll take that time a little bit after session, or even through just text RP if that's easier for them. Um, but I I try to make sure like okay, this character's coming. Let's let's you know we'll talk about this. Or if it's a new character that's first playing on my channel, I'm like, hey, why don't you tell us a little bit about your character to get it started so that they get that warm up? Like, oh crap, I need to talk. I'm gonna. We're gonna see how it goes, you know. So I'll have them introduce their character to the audience first, and then we'll introduce the character through a way on stream. Okay. Um, a lot of a lot of a lot of new players and new characters will be introduced easier through text RP. So that the first time they show up on my stream, they're just basically giving the audience a little look to see who they are because they haven't been on gotcha. stream before. Right. But right. the players themselves already know this person because they've been in text RP with them. Okay. So I have a quick question about about the text RP thing. Yeah. Is that is that and this is kind of from like a you know a Twitch streamer presenter type standpoint. Is that mm -hmm. displayed on your stream? Do you have that somewhere to where the audience sees that or is that happening more in the back? And not that really happens to... more in the background. However, my Discord server is open to anyone, so if they want to see the text RP, they can they can they totally can see it. Hop in and see it. Absolutely. Okay. Does that ever become an issue with the, with the audience? You know, like bringing something up that happened in text RP and the audience being like, well, I, don't, I don't know what they're talking about because I don't um, remember that ever happening. You know, 
for the most part, no, because a lot of a lot of my viewers are from the Discord channel, so they oh, they already okay. kind of know. Um, on occasion, we'll get some new people in, and they'll be like, I'll be like, hey, you can join our Discord. You can I, I have the command set up, so I can just pop Discord in there, and it'll it'll drop the link for them. Nice. Um, or we do a brief summary early on. So I'll start my my stream with, okay, so last week we kind of went over this. This is kind of what happened. Why don't you guys tell us what your character's done this week? So okay. that we can bridge that gap and they can talk a little Good. bit about what happened in text RP, like a brief overview so that we're not slogging up a lot of time with, oh, this is everything that happened. But, oh, my character has been doing this for the last week. My character has been working on building their house. My character has been working on training their pony. Um, right. So we they get that brief overview so it ties everything in. And then after stream session, I'll jump into my general chat in my Discord, and we'll talk about it there with the rest of the group that, you know, that wasn't in session that just wants to chit-chat for a little bit. That's so. Cool. We, we try to tie it in that way so you know briefly before and then at the end of session i'll drop the discord link again hey you guys you can always join us you know here if you don't want to be on camera come join us via text so we, we, we try sometimes it sometimes <laughs> it's easier said than done but yeah we, right that's well, kind you of get a lot going get. on you know and, and that's and that's um, not too bad because then because then people can can be there for the stream and can still see what's happening in the discord and oh, it also yeah. brings it also brings you know people into your discord you know, if they mm -hmm. want to see kind of the, what's happening in the background, they can kind of get that by coming into your Discord. Yeah, and I, I some, sorry, go ahead. No, go, no, go ahead. Right. Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, I, it's there's something to be said about the that ability to reference um, sort of like a body of work that isn't present on air. Like it kind of gives that feeling of like uh, you know that it is a living, breathing world. There's more happening than what you're seeing. Uh, like that's a cool uh element too obviously you don't want to go too far and be bringing up stuff that nobody has any idea what it's about but when you can say oh they've been doing this oh they're part of that oh okay and like people yeah. can like follow along and sort of fill in the gaps from uh, that's a cool element as well i think that's something yeah. that, you know and, be, and i yeah. feel like sometimes text is a little bit easier to get someone who's brand new into D D into mm -hmm. the game because they right. can see it all laid out oh this is like this is how this works and yeah when you're when you're talking and when we're doing yeah. this on camera it's this exact same format just but we're just work. vocalizing it yeah, right right <laughs> so you know we have we have it our, my rules page is you know if you're going to be doing something write it this way if you're going to be saying something write it this way gotcha. that way if you're going to be directing it at someone write it this way you know just just so we can see it so if you need a, me or you need one of my MODs, you can just add us, you know. Uh, if a player, because we have people from all over the world in my Discord server. I've got uh, a buddy of mine is in Hawaii right now. We've got people from Australia and from the Philippines and England and all across the United States. So we have people in different time zones. So if yeah. you're talking with someone who's from Australia, they go to bed at a different time than we do. So just sure. at them yep. to put a pin in it. And then when they wake up, they can they can go again. Um, right. So it's it's nice for people that are are from you know different places to interact with someone who's a little bit different or to get into the game in general. They're like, oh, I can ask questions. Absolutely, you can ask me questions. I have a whole Q and A page just for you. Like these are the most common right. questions, but if you have a weird one, just drop it here. <laughs> but hey, I think we're gonna take a minute to go on do like a ten minute break. Yep. Um, so why don't you take a second to uh, plug plug what you're yeah. doing? Um, you can drop like your Discord link in the in the Twitch chat if you want, or you know whatever kind of shameless plugs you wanna you wanna do. Right. Now is the time. My half ass speech about about what we do real quick. Yep. Okay. Who's going first? Oh, we'll have we'll have Vicky go first. So go ahead, give your okay. give your plug, Vicky. All right. So um, my my plug. Uh, we my, my Discord server is called Durgans and Dodecagons. Super original. Uh, <laughs> we talk about all kinds of goofy stuff. Uh, I do, as I said, stream on Fridays and Saturday nights, late night, like nine Eastern, um, till whenever we decide to go to sleep. Um, on Twitch, just with my my username there, it could be twenty nine. Uh, Circle of Ash is what our campaign is called. Um, I'm actually I'm looking for my invite link there we go um so uh yeah you can you can join us there you can join us on our discord as soon as i get my invite link my computer is being uh there we go drop it 
um, and uh, we do a bunch of stuff. Uh, some days it's an art stream because I'm in the mood to draw, and we have cool. stuff that we do with my art. Uh, but yeah, there's there's my Discord. It's open to everybody. We have a oh, good time. It, it, it's cute. It's it got with it. Uh, just send it to me in a in a thing, and I'll, yeah. I'll put it up. That's we'll post it up for you. All right, and so, yeah, and, and anybody who's watching, if you uh, if you like what we do and you want to become a part of our community, it's a rational radio. We do stuff like this uh, every Thursday. We have a podcast that comes out every every other Friday. Um, we have a, a streamed game every other Monday, and we might have a secret in the works um, in in the near future. It's a secret secret. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Took me a second. <laughs> Um, uh, there, our community has all sorts of different people who run all sorts of different games, and there's a West Marches game there um, that we're we're um, that we need people for. So come come <laughs> be in our West March game, please. I'll I'll pay you hundred dollars. That's the new one. <laughs> <You won't. laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, I won't pay you, but but you should totally still come. It's a lot of fun, and the DMs are great. Um, other than that, uh, if you like what we do enough to pass us money, we have a we have a Patreon channel. It's linked below as well um blah 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 you know the whole beg for money on twitch thing um other than that i don't <laughs> yeah it's just, this episode <laughs> has been sponsored by cracker barrels plushy dragon oh, absolutely like they're, they're All right. yeah it has not been sponsored by them i want i want you to know that we wish it could be <laughs> oh, we wish. hey there's 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 the thing it worked i think do you guys see that it does look chat? like a discord link that's perfect okay that's there we go We'll be back in 10 minutes, 10 minutes. and uh, when we get back, we'll reveal the key to um, having the, the perfect iced tea yep. without sugar in it. Yep. Perfect, perfect iced tea. You yeah. revealed the key. <laughs> oh, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back in 10 minutes, everybody. Are you one of millions of adventurers who have suffered from dagger infested dungeons? Are you a shopkeeper with a cellar full of wild pythons? Are you a bard trying to seduce a medusa? Then I have the product for you. Dr. Josiah Mason here with Sneak Begone Oil. Just one drop of this revolutionary product will have you saying, gee, all the snakes are gone. Because that is exactly what will happen. Anacondas? Gone. Giant Vipers? Gone. Water Naga, Spirit Naga, Bone Naga? Gone, gone, gone. Sneak Begone Oil will even work on a Medusa. Yes, any snake or snake-related creature that comes within 100 meters will be miraculously repelled in an instant. It's that fast. Those snakes won't know what hit them when you use Snake Begone Oil. Don't wait. Get yours today. Snake Begone Oil has not been tested by the King's Alchemist or any royal authority. Snake Begone Oil should not be used as a replacement for combat, pest control, or as a marital aid. Gnomes who are pregnant or nursing should avoid contact with Snake Begone Oil. Snake Begone Oil has not been proven to repel snakes of any kind. All sales final. And we are back to table 13. Hello, the everybody. Secret, the secret, everybody, mm -hmm. is not putting sugar in it. Yep. Which that's, you that's, that's how you make tea that isn't sweet. <laughs> that's what you do with say before you went in. No, I that is the secret. Yep. The people who forgot are going to be astounded by this, this yeah. new <laughs> scientific Obviously. discovery. Obviously. Right. Also, I forgot to plug the Vault of the Cavitarian, which is every other Friday oh, night yeah. at 7 o'clock. Yep. Uh, it's a community game that members of the community can join in. It's sort of like a Dark Souls mega dungeon thing with floors and stuff. It's cool. Yeah. Iron runs it. Um, and it's it's super dope. Dope as fuck. Dope. <laughs> dope as soap on a rope. So, um, yeah, uh, going back to the interview format for which we began <laughs> this oh, yeah. show, because, mm -hmm. you know, someone's got to steer the ship um uh, you've been we've been talking a lot about online role playing and online dming what are some uh well i guess to, to begin with um what if i was a new dm looking to begin role playing online where would you suggest that i start how would you suggest i start um my first tools that i would tell you to get is a discord server um, mostly because you can, even if you don't have your players play on there, you can organize it for yourself, for your notes. Mm. Um, I, I have about, uh, a million and five, uh, secret channels that none of my players see that I just write notes in. Um, so get yourself a discord. Uh, if you're playing 5e, get yourself a D and D beyond account. It's free. Um, it's a good place to just look up things. Like if you just need to look up what a spell does, you can just look it up super helpful um but um 
if, if you have the money to do a subscription for D&D Beyond, so you get a couple of books, or you can share your information with a campaign, that's that's pretty cool too. But if you're looking for just free, just having that to, to play around with the character sheet every once in a while is really helpful. Um, if you're not good at making maps, like when I first started, I was really not good at making maps. Um, Don John has a free yeah. map maker. Please use it. Yep. They're they're awesome. They're, they're really good in a pinch too. So if, like I said, if my players go a different way, I have something quick I can. I use uh, Don John for cities. It's just, it's yes. the best for coming up with city maps. Oh yeah. It's, oh man, it's beautiful. You download them as a PNG and then throw them up on roll twenty, and you're like, there, yeah. take it. It's your city now. I've yep. watched people take those and download them and put them in like Photoshop and like mm-hmm. spruce, spruce oh, them up. Oh yeah, they, that's that's pretty solid. Oh yeah, I do a little ah. bit of messing around in Roll Twenty with with some of them too, just like drawing extra boxes and stuff on it. But it's never much better than like MS Paint quality. <laughs> no, but it still it still works out. I mean, ah. absolutely, yeah, it works. Even if you're online, don't discredit what you can do with a pen and a piece of paper. Um, my very first, this is actually my very first dungeon map I ever drew. It is <laughs> pen and paper. Um, I have, you know, my, um, puzzles for toddlers written all around here. The different things that they need to do. <laughs> this is um, puzzles for toddlers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, this is a map that I drew much later, but nice. don't discount what you nice. can do with a piece of paper and a pen. Um, keep your notes. Make sure you keep yeah. your notes. Oh, yeah. You're going to need them later. Um, what I found most helpful for myself when I was setting up my world to give to my players, I used a Google slide presentation, which might sound really, really dumb, no. but you can put the information on there like you're presenting it to somebody else. And even if it's something that you don't want to say out loud to all of your players, you can drop that link somewhere because it's shareable and they can view it at their leisure. Hey, this right. is all my lore. It's right there for you. If you need something, control F, let's find it. That's cool. Yeah. Don't be afraid to use the free tool. Google, if you have a Google email address, you have access to Google Slides, Google Docs, and Google Sheets. They are going to be your friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I have all of my players give me a quick Google Sheet, if they care, a Google Doc, if they can, just their brief background in those 15 questions. Super helpful for me to have a background. And a lot of people are not very smart, and they give me open-ended backgrounds, so I can mm-hmm. do what yeah. I want with them. Yep. <laughs> So what, it's uh, good to have them all in one place. What emulator do you use? Do you use Roll20 or do you use Fantasy Grants or another one? I don't normally use one. I Ooh, have a Roll20 set up for spicy. mine. Um, so we have, when we're doing RP in the Discord, I have Avre uh, Bot, which yeah. links to yeah, D&D Beyond. Thing. So you, oh, can, okay. you can drop your character sheet right on Avre and just go from there. Like You don't have to worry about it. Um, and you can do up to 10. So I'm in a bunch of Discord servers where it's play-by-post. So I have a different character set for each server. Right, but, nice. Um, which is super awesome. But yeah, I'm I'm very much... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dictate to you what you see, what you feel, what you taste, what you touch, all of it. I'm going to give that to you. And I'll give you a visual sometimes. Like I said, I try to give something as a visual. But for the most part, we are... Um, we play with regular dice on stream and nice. okay. um, we, we roll it out and, and I trust my players to tell me the truth with their roles. Um, it's brave. Yeah. I'm not trusting. Very brave. At all. No. <laughs> not with these it is guys. very brave. I, I, I have played in, in a discord server where people were, were caught cheating and we went to a bot, which wasn't very fun. Um, but uh, I get it. But I, I'll roll with it. I'm a huge proponent of dice on the table. I I, I love the the feeling of rolling dice. That's part of D&D. <laughs> this is this is the sound that scares my players. The most. <laughs> <laughs> There's 24 d6s in here. I I, I just use uh, roll 20 for the rolls and just boop. Oh look, you're dead. <laughs> Oops, look at that big um, number. <laughs> I I do. I love the math rocks. They're my favorite. So I'd rather toss them than use a bot any day but when it when it comes to 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 our play by post rps avre is is the way to go because it just rolls everything for you and and you can set your commands um we've done a lot of a lot of one of my mods i'm not going to take the credit for this my my mod dumbness he's taken a lot of time to play around with that bot and find out how things go uh so um yeah it's 
my, my favorite tools, like going back to the question, my favorite tool, uh, the Google suite, because it's free and it's so versatile for this. Like I said, I have D100 tables coming out my ears uh, in my, my thing that I have affectionately coined Ikea. Um, <laughs> Just, just to have because I, I've even created a meta gaming table. A couple of my players are really <laughs> bad at meta gaming, so when I catch them, they have to roll me a, a D100 on my meta gaming table and see what happens. It's like wild magic, but worse. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we've we've created, you know, that, but it's it's all Google, so it, it can be easily shared if you have a, a moderator that you want to have access to that information if you're sick. Or, or if they're going to run a bounty for you or something like that, it's great. Um, have a good team. Um, I My original five players, three of them are no longer with us in our group just because life took a toll and they, they've gone and done different things. But the two original guys from my, my first game, uh, my first session, are my two head mods. So they're my assistant DMs when I need someone to run something for me. Um, nice. So I, I honestly think having a good core group um, even if you're opening up to a community game like I did, having a good core group is, is going to be really helpful. And you really you don't need much from them to, but to say, hey, you need something to done. I'll do it. Let, let's do this. Right. Um, my, uh, my two mods, I give them all the props because I have over 40 different little things that can be going on at the same time. And they'll they'll take 10 or 12 off my back. And that's... <sighs> a lot of weight mm, off your shoulders right. uh but no having a good core group and and just um rule 20 is excellent i have used it a lot in the past as a player i'm still trying to get around it as a dm i'm just really bad with it so i'm trying but it's a really good free resource so that, that's another one but yeah uh roll 20 discord D D beyond and uh pen and paper would be your best bet yeah. and, and the google suite what if, uh, in your experience, what have you you found to be the major problems with role playing online? Major problems. Um, the music. I feel like um, it's very difficult to find the right mood setting music. I can hear it in my ears, uh, especially state Discord did for Spotify, which is I have Spotify Premium, so I used to just play something you know low in the background just to have for the Twitch viewers. And my players could listen along with me. But now, if I talk more than 30 seconds on Discord, it cuts my music. Yep. Because it's the new Spotify update. So it's really hard for me to get a good background sound, um, which I guess hmm. Roll20 would be really good for because you yeah. can drop things in there. Yep. yep. Um, yeah. But I have to play around with that a little bit more. But for me, it's the music. I like setting a tone, I like setting a scene. And just like in a good movie, that. You know, when it's real tension-y, you have that high-pitched squeak that's real low in the background that gets louder. Like, mm -hmm. you want that. You want that sound. You, you want that. So, um, Kevin McLeod's Long Note 1. That's the song for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, some, sometimes you just, it, it's really hard to set a scene when you, you don't, when you're not there with the group. You can't, you can't just have Spotify playing in the background and you can't tell it to switch to something when it's mm -hmm. time to switch. And, right. For me, that's my biggest downside. Um, I another feel you there because uh, when I when I run say when I was running uh, stuff in Roll Twenty and we would use the Roll Twenty sounds, um, it, they'd be like they'd go into a town. I'd, I'd throw on the the town music, you know, and there'd be like the the blacksmith hammer hitting the thing, and you'd hear the the ducks and the or whatever are in the town. It's just the whole like scene of that, and then and then they go into a cave, and they're still you know I wouldn't change it. Yep. It'd yeah. still be running the town music and yep. there'd be the, the blacksmith hammer, you know, and it was yeah, just yeah. like, okay. I can't focus on that many things at once. Yeah. That's I just, why like, I had playlists set up. They're like, oh, we're going to be traveling, traveling playlist. Oh, we're going to be battle. I can just quick. Like, right. I, I just have Brett add cool. everything into post. That's how I <laughs> deal with the music. It's, yeah. It that's just, fair. It kind of goes through a rotation. Yep. Kyron does the whole like GM thing, and then Eric does all this audio work, and then it comes to me. I add music to it, and that's and that's how a podcast is yeah. born. But the the only other thing that I would say is for my players that don't have a camera when they play, because I don't require a camera if you're going to be on stream. I just require that you talk uh, at least a little bit. Mm. Um, I, I actually have a, one of our players is in the military, and he can't. He can talk for the beginning, but once it gets too late, he has to turn his mic off, which is fine. 
and he'll he'll text it out he'll write it out for us and and we will talk we'll, we'll talk it out oh his character is going to do this okay then this is what happens so um we try to work around that but um i like seeing the faces of my players i like being able to interact and gauge that emotion which is hard to do if they're not on a camera you know what i mean um i like to make sure that my message is getting out there even if it's me just grossly describing how this guy just died i want to see that reaction right that's that's, that's the funny. other downside see i enjoy yeah. for me the the wall of just the mic uh for for our, i i tend to run audio only games uh it's easier for me to do silly voices and do things like that because i don't have to worry it's it, i'm just in front of my wall you know like making dumb faces and i don't i don't look at my face my when neighbors. I, just, <laughs> I just don't look <laughs> just forget that it's happening it's yeah that's yeah Otherwise, I think video yeah, adds a whole nother aspect to it i mean even games that i run that are not streamed I'll, I'll try and get people that are interested in using webcams because, you know, because the original D and D that, that thing you grew up doing in the, in your friend's Safe basement, face. you know, it's all in, around a table and there's, there's a certain charm to that, that you, Absolutely. you lose when you, when you just go audio. Um, I can, you can, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I, my face has its own voice. Like uh, right. when I, when I use silly voices or when I'm, I'm making a point, my face will do stupid things. And I want my players to be able to see that because it's part of it. Um, I, I don't do a ton of voices. I have like my seductive voice if I'm if if you know they're dealing with a demon or you know I have my you know, um, lowborn kind of you know Cockney person if they're dealing with someone that's you know living on the street. But like each one has its own facial expressions and and often like. We actually uh, have a character that's a reoccurring character. He's the guild master. His name is Horngar. He's a tiefling, and he <laughs> sighs a lot. And he does this all the time. And it, we've affectionately coined it pulling a Horngar because that's how often he does this. <laughs> and other characters will do it too. But it, them seeing me doing those things helps them. So like, I, I would appreciate if I could see your face doing those things too. <laughs> right. You know? It adds the immersion. It absolutely does. Um... Which I think is is I don't know, it's it just it put brings it that much closer to what is near and dear to my heart you know what I what I did from freshman year on uh, is you know never escaped kinda, from never <laughs> escaped no it was horrible still is horrible and I have you to blame Gyron yep <laughs> I know ouch but uh, yeah no no that's uh, uh it's I find myself that. Uh, I get really sucked into the camera a little bit like other people's camera. And so I tend to focus on that a little bit too much when I'm trying to DM for a camera game. Uh, and it's just another layer of complexity you have to take care of and make sure it's working right for something like a stream. Um, That's fair. Yeah, so I, I tend to shy away a little bit from, from the camera work, but I can definitely see where the expressions and the reactions of the players are really handy in terms of like cons like figuring out what to do next you know because you can kind of tell too if your players are getting bored without having to ask yeah that's kind of yeah. one of my problems with just audio only is i can't tell if people are paying attention or not on some of my other games i have a few players who i suspect ha are doing other things while i am trying to run a game and they're trying to play a game because I'll explain something in combat and then be like, all right, it's your turn. And they'll be like, what's, I don't know what's going on. And I just, ah, yeah. if I can just see you, uh, I can yeah, be like, yeah. hey, be like, hey, hey, hey. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey. I get that. Uh, that's the other part of it too, is it's when you're on video, audio only, there's a lot of cues that you just don't catch as like a normal human having a face to face conversation. It's like, Oh, he's about to talk or they're, you know, not done or they didn't like that comment or whatever that you can like read on people that they don't have to say anything. And like, yeah, you, it's stuff that'll break the immersion. Basically it's like, Oh crap. No, wait, you go. I'm sorry. Oh, you were talking, you know, you have that happen three set three times in a row. And like, you know, everybody's now steps out of their character. Cause they're like, Oh yeah, we're all trying to play D and D here kind of thing for a second too. So Video helps avoid those kind of mess ups as well, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just saw the uh, nothing worse than a player who shows up suddenly two hours into a game. <laughs> <laughs>
That is real though. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, yeah. yeah. You don't want people who aren't engaged and then, you know, suddenly are. Yeah. That's not. Yeah. Or you can yeah. see when Bags gets up and runs away from the microphone during the God's favor. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't show not back up in time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you don't see it if he's doing it right. He gets back just in time. That's funny. Uh, I so yeah, here we're, we're getting close to our uh, cutoff time here. I will, uh, Brian, do you have any questions for us, Vicky? Anything, oh. anything that you, I don't know, or uh, I know it's a little bit arrogant, but are you interested in us at all? You know? <laughs> Uh, May we bestow uh, no. upon you Any, great wisdom. You you are a, a DM, and this is a time to get other DMs, um, you know, perspective on things. Is there anything that uh, between the three of us that you have questions on, or that you would you'd want a different perspective on DMing wise? I feel like my game style is very open world, kind of West Marches, kind of you know Skyrim. You know, there are main quests you can do, but everyone does all the side quests first. That's that's kind of how I feel my campaign is. Um, I guess. Do you guys prefer that style campaign or do you prefer a more linear campaign? I 100% want to do a sandbox game every time. I, I, don't, I don't really craft a quest until the, the characters really have driven something in a certain direction. Um, I'll build like a city and a world and then I'll take the players' backgrounds and sort of shuffle them to, to find something that they all kind of could be interested in, could all coalesce into one thing and then mm -hmm. and then try and steer them in that direction um i i run a i run a game for um some of the people on our channel here that uh is uh it's it's a like a cyberpunk noir game and the the whole the basically the whole premise of the game at this point is um trying to find their their they're trying to find out what happened to one of the player's sons who's also the lover of one of the other players who blah, 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 blah. And they all kind of, it's like a murder mystery kind of from like 10 years ago. It's like a cold case. And, and so they're all kind of doing it, but then there's all stuff happening in the background. That's going to somehow maybe tie into that. Maybe not spoilers. I promise it won't maybe possibly tie into that. Um, but uh, that's, that's kind of how I want to, you know, it's, it's not like step one, get a horse, step two, go right. to this town, step three, kill the goblins, you know? Uh, yeah, I definitely tend toward a, uh, like I will have, I generally try to have some sort of background tension that exists. That's like a thing that the players can potentially get involved in as like a default. Like, okay, if you guys, if the party isn't going to be able to sort of define their own path, that's there's the like, quest. Yeah. yeah, there's like <laughs> a chain. Yeah, exactly. There's a change in power, or, you know, like a leader's just died or something sketchy or something you know blah 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 things like that they, they can like okay we'll pitch in on one side or the other of this until some other thing develops or if they really are interested they can follow that along and turn it into some kind of i have a lot of civil campaigns that end up <laughs> like civil wars basically but um the uh but uh, yeah i i like it better when uh when you can find a group that's got some sort of um ulterior motive uh, i guess like my sunday game they uh they're like <laughs> they're starting the an orphan gang. yeah the barrel gang <laughs> uh they 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 <laughs> they're the barrel gang because they trap people in barrels as a punishment because they're not you know they're not going to kill people that's mean that's murdering but they will lock you in a barrel for like <laughs> eight twelve hours and i'm like you guys get that that's like that's you're like you know, you know still super bad whatever <laughs> uh, but yeah and, and then they're yeah they're starting an orphanage like right now it's one of their biggest things they've got ah, like a yeah. property outside of town and they're mm. rounding up street kids so that they it's like no it's you know they're not child soldiers they're kids that were training and giving a trip it's like no nah, man like you're kind of these are just warrior orphans. orphans. You call them warrior orphans. Like that's not. <laughs> oh. <no. laughs> like, oh my god. Yeah, I the barrel gang and the warrior orphans. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like you know, and obviously yeah, that's a little fucked on several levels. But you know whatever. I guess you know D and D's about Fuck, taking several levels. Strokes on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like very complicated yep. concepts and boiling them down into funny things. So. Don't you flashback you know, that soul. Don't you dare. <laughs> so yeah, I, I have I've kind of we oh, the three of us have very similar style in terms of how we approach story building, and you're not going to hear any e 
any of us say that we sit down to roleplay a campaign with a story in mind. Usually when one of us, it, it, especially for me, when I sit down, I have a world in mind. I have, I have a setting in mind. And then I would like, I, I find groups that will take, like, take that setting and then make a story out of it. And I try to use the characters, like, interests, or even, like, the way that they've handled themselves the first three sessions and build a story from their actions in the first sessions. So really, like, the, the story is created when they begin the campaign as they're role-playing in the first few sessions. But then I always try to create an overarching plot that does kind of work as, like, an, a you know, a linear path, but I really try to make that organic in that the players have chosen this arc by the way that they handled themselves in the first three to four sessions. You know, if they're there, if they're in the city and they get a, like, you know, a, a job to take a cart of supplies from one place to another, um, and they're, they're sticking with that, then I'll be like, okay, well, you know, then the cart is somewhere else and you have to go get it. And then they go get it and they find more stuff and it, it the story develops from there. Um, yeah, and, you know, it's, it's not ever going to be some kind of, um, you know, like, root, I'm never going to sit down and have an idea of where I want the players to go. It's, that always revolves around setting. And then I try to make the story, too, mostly the interactions the role players have with each other, too. You know, I really want a large portion of the setting to be role play. You, you said something earlier where you like to split up role play and, you know, you like your your uh, role players to get, like direct their own variety. My favorite groups are the ones that just want to role play, like that hardly ever want to do combat. And so I usually end up, you know, running campaigns that each session is eight hours in game or like a half a day. And you know, it takes if they're going to the next town and it's an eight-day travel, that's an arc in itself. Like, that is a big part of the story, is how they're going to get to that place. Um, but, you know, that's just, that's how, you know, and then, yeah, that's how I build the story from there. So. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Uh, I'm getting a little robot. You lost your first yeah. that, but it's... Uh... Yeah. Everything yeah, it's is... Right. I thought it was just me. Oh, my no, God. Yeah, it's approaching yeah. midnight, so... Uh, well, your internet's internet. taking yeah, it it's, it's going to start yeah. start turning into a pumpkin. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks everybody on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> God. Thanks for joining us on a another episode of Table Thirteen, and uh, thank you, Vicky, very much for joining us for for yeah. this interview. Anytime. Yeah. Uh, we drop your Discord fun. in the in the Twitch chat again if y'all want to check that out and get in on the fun. Do it. Um. Also, uh, no sugar. That's what no, makes that's the secret. The yep. best that's a good iced tea. Yep. That's, <laughs> that's the secret. But we'll so. see you all again. Um, well, I don't know. Should I plug everything? Uh, uh, yeah. Patreon did uh, down podcast. Uh, yep. It's called Dragons, apparently. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, other stream on Monday. Other stream uh, on God's Day Ether. Fall to the cafeteria. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We're we're real good so well. at this. We're, we're professional. <laughs> you just you, you need like a, a commercial. Just make a commercial. I do. I just need to oh record it and just yeah. drop it to in put that together. That is a this great idea, to... actually. Yeah. This is more fun because then I can play with it and do stupid stuff like mm -hmm. it's true. Eric say all the names. Yep. Um, yeah. Anyway, the Discord. Join sure Discord. Like Hang out. Yep. Join some games. There's a little LFG community with you know a bunch of our people throw up games and stuff. Uh, the West Marches game is really great. We have a lot of really good DMs and we have some really some great mods who care a lot about it. There's a there's a free RP like a I guess free form RP area that you can kind of jump in with whatever type of character you want to play as and 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 just do role play, you know, uh, without roles and just just all that stuff. So I mean, join, check it out, um, hang out with us and be our best friends forever. Um, and until next Thursday, I think is when next time we'll stream. Yes. Um, we yes. will. We will see you. Have a wonderful day. Wash your hands, please. Thank you very much. Everybody. Wash your Wash hands. Wash your hands. Seriously. <laughs>